All right, we are, we are live. live. <laughs> we are definitely live. Let me make sure we're live here on Insta, not Insta. I'm about to switch up completely. Okay. Well, while you do that, I'm going to start my intro and I'm going to take you off this screen so we can introduce you the right way while you get your thing going. Hold on, y'all. What up, what up, what up? What up, everybody? It's your girl, Marquita, but they like to call me Who Miss Hollywood. You're tuned into another episode of So Hollywood, the podcast. Hey, hey, is it me or is it? Shout out to YouTube. <laughs> I am have arrived. <laughs> we have a special guest in the building. All of my guests are special, but this is legend. Like, I often wonder how I get these 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 humans. I don't want to say uh, celebrities. I don't want to call them any other other thing than what they are. These humans to grace the presence of my podcast. This is amazing. Unfortunately, Instagram went down today. Facebook went down today. But you know what? I had to switch it up for y'all. Instagram is out the way. YouTube, we are here now. You understand me? And shout out to everybody that will be tuned in and that is tuned in. Uh, I'm going to bring my special guest up here shortly. Oh, my gosh. Y'all, I'm so nervous. I'm sweating bullets, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good nervous though because you know you get those jitters and you work them out on screen and it's just like oh man you get to see the real raw reaction of a legend and a legend in the making which is myself a legend in the making and a legend today uh, hey, 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 what up, everybody? It's your girl, Marquita, but they like to call me Miss Hollywood. You're tuned into another episode of So Hollywood, the podcast. Uh, so Hollywood, the podcast is a platform where everyone is treated equally, and I bring them together with this thing called entertainment. Uh, last episode, I had MC Shan. Yes, MC Shan. He's a Queensbridge native. He's known for the song, The Bridge. I don't know if y'all old enough or if y'all young enough or whatever it is. I'm an 80s baby, so I know exactly who that is. If y'all don't know who that is, he is a part of the culture. Like, I need for you guys to understand where this thing called entertainment and hip hop comes from. So he is uh, also a member of the legendary Juice Crew. Uh, you can follow him on Instagram whenever Instagram comes back up. MC Shan, M-C-S-H-A-N, the number one. Um, and from here on out, you'll be able to see me here on YouTube. Oh my gosh, y'all. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm just so nervous. And without further ado, I'm going to bring my guests to the forefront. Oh my goodness. Uh, he is a mute. Oh, I'm not. I'm sorry. A multi platinum music producer. Let me get it together. Uh, he is a DJ. He is an Inglewood representer, screenwriter, filmmaker, composer. Oh my gosh, the list literally goes on. Uh, today we have on So Hollywood the podcast, Chris the Glove Taylor. How you doing today? Absolutely fantastic. How are you today? I am blessed and highly favored because I see, <laughs> I, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm excited about this whole situation and where my podcast is leading. And it's just, uh, it's just wonderful. So I see you're in a beautiful location. Uh, <laughs> where are you at? Where are you today? I'm in my yard uh, looking at my collard oh. greens. Ooh. <sighs> Mother items back there. Yep. We, uh. We all here to talk. We get better light and better internet. For sure, for <laughs> sure, for sure. And um, as I stated, you are um, a well-known DJ. You're also what I read on the internet. I don't. Of course, you know you can always stop me because the internet is not always right. So doing my research because I do. I got a pen and paper. I got everything in front of me. You are a ghost producer to Dr. Dre, and which we'll get into that in just a second. <laughs> We're gonna get into that. Hold no your ghosts. <laughs> you said there's no such thing as ghosts. No such thing as ghosts, girl. <laughs> I know uh, that's right. Talk about that. Okay, okay. Okay, so let's get this interview uh going. How did this thing called entertainment enter your life? So Must have been like 14 years old. Thir no, I take that back. 12. And 
my mom wanted me to learn a musical instrument. When I grew up, everybody had to learn an instrument, you know, and I didn't realize, but musical instruments help develop your learning capabilities. So, yeah, it's a secret. That's why they took all well, the instruments out. I did the saxophone from the third grade to the twelfth grade. So there you go. So um, when I was about twelve, my mom wanted me to either learn the piano or the organ. So I think everybody I knew took piano lessons. They all hated it. So I was like, right. organ. I didn't even know what an organ was. I didn't know. No, I mean, I kind of did because I went to church. But you know, it was the great big. The organ was the whole church. Like we had a pipe right. organ. The pipes were in the walls. Like the organ right. would come up and the whole room would shake. So I was like, yeah, the organ. <laughs> so it's a funny thing. So I go to this, she gets me organ lessons and I go meet my teacher. His name is Toussaint McCall. So uh -huh. Toussaint McCall so happened to not just know how to play the organ, but he had a gold record hanging up above the organ. So oh, I was wow. like, what's that? He was like, oh, that's uh, that's for selling records. Uh, you know, I had a song on the radio. If you learn how to play the organ like me, you can have one of those too. I was like, I want that. So <laughs> I went to my lessons because I saw that. I didn't care nothing about the instrument. <laughs> right, right. It was all about that gold record. So uh -huh. I was like, that's how I came into my life at about 12 years old. Shout out to Tucson McCall, wherever he is. He started yes. this. Mm. And my mom. And my you're dad. from Inglewood, correct? Huh? And you're from Inglewood, correct? I am from Los Angeles, California, born in Hollywood, actually, okay. at the at the uh, Cedars of Lebanon Hospital. I went to Inglewood High School, though, and okay. I live in Ladera Heights, which is right near Inglewood. That's border. I okay. represent Inglewood. I represent all of L.A. <laughs> I know so, that's oh, right. I know that's right. Oh, so... That, Mm -hmm. What was the music scene, or not just the music scene, the entertainment scene like growing up in um, in Hollywood and in, in Los Angeles and in and, and the other cities that you had, uh, I'm sure, partaked in? So the thing about growing up, the entertainment business here, it's like multi-layered. So as far as music and there's different ways. I saw groups like Guns N' Roses blow up from performing at the Troubadour. And I saw groups like uh, Devo blow up from whiskey. You know, they were bands blowing up from clubs. That was the big thing. And uh, so we started a thing where DJs blew up from clubs. Mm. Instead of the, okay. It was the DJ. So I was a DJ at a club called Radio. Uh, other um, people that were there, Ice-T was the MC. So I'm the house music guy with a group called Shake City. They were also there. They were actually here before me, but I was a headliner. You know, I came on later. Not so much headliner, but I played last. You played your position. Right. You played, you're right. <laughs> Just like Anthony Davis, he don't want to be a five, but he a five. So I played a five then. Hey, whatever it takes. <laughs> Fact. Fact. So uh, anyway, um, I lost track of what I was saying. Something about <laughs> the DJs. So yes. we guys like me, Egyptian lover, Arabian Prince, we were DJing Jam and Jim and I, we would DJ Roger Clayton, Uncle Jam's Army. We would do these parties, mm -hmm. DJ Ridge. There were these picnics in car clubs, Capri Club, Z Cars, Uncle Jam's Army. Uh later on, Ultra Wave, rest in peace to my boy Greg, who started that. Um, so the DJs became popular. We started being able to sell out arenas with just DJs, like the sports arena, right. Uncle Jam's Army. So it's kind of like the beginning of the festival whole era. This is in the early 80s. So, so how, did, how did DJing even become prominent in your life? Because you went from be playing the organ to now scratching the turn. <laughs> you know, stage DJ. <laughs> right, so, like yeah, right. So the organ is a trip. It led to a musical life in high school. I can, and but I played the. You know, I didn't play the trumpet or drums. I wanted to play the drums, but I didn't know how to play the drums. So, right. I figured they teach you, you know. But little did I know, I was supposed to learn that in the seventh grade. Right, right, right. High school was with <laughs> so I was behind. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So anyway, they found a need for me. 
But what it did was it allowed me to play the Spender Rhodes, the keyboard, mm-hmm. on a mm-hmm. platform, built a stage for me. So they would roll it or they would put me on it. So I was used to being on a thing, right? So right, right. DJing is the same. You're on stage. So what happened was I went to Englewood High School, graduated, tried to go play basketball, Cal State Northridge, and dropped out of school. I went to school for aeronautical engineering. I was in the, I got accepted, got in the program. And then, yeah, I was going to design. I wanted to make a thing. When I was growing up, it was rockets, and they would just dump them in the trash. So I wanted to make something they didn't have to put in the trash, like the space shuttle. Right. So I right. found out at 17 that they had secret programs that nobody really knew about because a year later, the space shuttle took off. I was going to make it. <laughs> it flew the next year, so I quit. <laughs> like, I'm going to have to do something else. <laughs> right. Somebody already- they already got it. <laughs> yeah, they got that. Did you tell a brother? I was only 17. What you going to know at 17, right? You ain't going to. No YouTube. No. You got the news. And all the news is is propaganda. So they just going to tell you what you want to know. Right. So what you to know. So anyway, mm-hmm. aside from all that, I was didn't make the basketball team. Came out. You know, I'm 6'6". Six, six. I'm not making basketball teams. I'm like, this is not happening. So. <laughs> I could play the piano or anything with keys I can play. Right. And I just didn't want to be a musician. Like, nah, you know, that's corny. You know what I mean? Like, all my friends were musicians. You know, I grew up with guys. I went to high school, junior high school, with guys that played on Michael Jackson's album. And, you know, these great musicians. I wasn't going to try to. Remember, I told you, I was late. So right. I wasn't even going to try to compete with. They was in bands at Henry Clay in junior high school. I just yeah. got into music. I'm graduate. I graduated. I was in the ninth grade at 12. I graduated on 16. So what? anyway, um, I was like, what can I do right. to be the best at it? It's not basketball. Michael Jordan hadn't come out yet. It was Magic Johnson was coming. 79 this was. So it was nobody really great. Right. You know, the big guys, Will Chamberlain and Kareem were those superstars there. But mm-hmm. uh so I go from and Bill Russell. So I go from wanting to play basketball to I had an epiphany. I'm walking down the street. I was like, what can I do? And the words DJ, be a DJ. So this one I learned. I didn't learn this, but this is the first experience I had with you heard of intuition? Yes. Yes. You know what that means? No, can you explain it to me? So you know what tuition is? Tuition is when you gotta pay to go to school. Right. But what tuition really is is learning they just give a name for what you pay to learn they just call it you're going to charge you tuition but they're charging you for your tuition for your learning tuition okay. is learning so intuition learning from in intuition like you know it but this is the catch to intuition you really know it like this is black nobody taught me that i just right. know that that's black and then somebody goes oh that's black and you go I knew that, right? right? That's intuition. So okay. this thing from inside of me told me, be a DJ. I said, okay, what's a DJ? <laughs> <laughs> I remember <laughs> records and, you know, that should look corny too, but okay. okay. Then I discovered Grandmaster Flash on the wheels of steel. And when I heard that record, I was on a mission to recreate those sounds. I had to find out what it was. I went from record player in the house right. to turn to. like those are two different items remember we had a record player or a record changer where you could put a stack of records on it you couldn't touch it you put the needle on it if your mama let you <laughs> hello real talk and that's very and rare had- that's very rare see <laughs> so that was my first experience of listening to music okay so uh then I, I figured, you know, I would go to Radio Shack and I figured out it was turntable. So I had a buddy that was working with me. I was at the time right out of high school. I remember I just graduated, got kicked out of college. Right. Gotcha. So I'm now, which is a JC. And I'm, are you from LA? No, I'm originally from Detroit. I'm originally from Detroit. Live, I live in Virginia. Love- no, I live in Virginia Beach right now. Okay, so L- Santa Monica College, Santa Monica City. It's okay. a beach JC for stoners and college dropouts, like the okay. fun college. So I'm going there oh. to learn about broadcasting lies so (laughs) i went there to get a student loan and meet girls 
Oh, so, okay. Okay. Yep. Understood. I get it. I, I learned what gear I had to get from Tony Joseph, rest in peace. He was a DJ here in LA from New York who showed me the turntable. He took out his mom. He said, you're a DJ? Come over to my house. We were both working at Burger King. He's like, I'm a DJ. I'm like, no, I want to be a DJ. You are a DJ? He's like, yeah, I'm going to show you. So, you know, I was kids. We don't never say you lying. We go, ooh, and you go. You right. want to see, right? Say you a liar. Remember, right. as kids, you are more open. Nowadays, they do, but before not, then. But not but, the four-year-olds and three-year-olds. Right, 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 right. True children, two, three. Oh, let me see. You can fool them all day. Look, I got Santa Claus. Oh, let me see. Look, Santa Claus over there. Oh, let me see. They don't be like, you're lying. You can just keep fooling them. That's the age I'm talking about. That's gotcha. the true. I understand. That's a true wild human. Right. That's when, before you're potty trained is when you're, that's what we supposed to be. Gotcha. That. Gotcha. Like at this size though, with diapers or whatever. We supposed to act like those children. Open, honest, the good parts. Right, so right. He, uh, I, I'm like, ooh. So he pulls out the record changer. I'm like, ah, whatever. Cable, turntable, which I had just discovered. I'm like, ooh, I know what that is. Then he right. pulled out a mixer with a fader in the middle that went from the left to the right. I had never seen a crossfader. That was like the first mixer with a crossfader. It was all knobs. So I had right. learned how to mix with knobs. You turn one up, you turn the other one down. You got to have them both up to get the mix. So right. I used to scratch with knobs like I was really clever with that so we went from that to he showed me that and I saw that and I went and put that gear together got the Grandmaster Flash and the wheels of steel and I still didn't know how he was doing that sound right to scratch it chuka chuka right. so it was just like uh, your boy Cool Herc like I had the record in my hand and my mom called me and I moved it and my headphone or something went woof and I was like oh woof woof wooka wooka Ma, let Look me call you back. back. <laughs> okay, so now I got to figure out how to get the needle to stay. But you know what I mean? I got it. Right. <laughs> so that's how I went from organ to DJ. From DJ wow. to... Yeah, breaking from DJ. As soon as I learned that, that from that day, it was less than a year I was in the movie. DJ. Wow. He said I, I loved it. I was a natural. What? Hey, I forgot to put some in here, but ice. <laughs> it's all good. Nah, nah, look what happened. The straw just. Oh, love. I love, I love this podcast. It's so raw. It's getting, yes. everybody, it's getting everybody uncensored, but I love it. So that's your transition to being a DJ. And, and then you said soon thereafter. So that was around from what I'm from what I'm seeing is around 81, 82 ish. You became a DJ. OK, so I was born in 83. So I hadn't even been born yet. Nope, not yet. You are 80s, baby. That means after 80. Yeah. And 80. <laughs> yeah. usually around. 384 when they say that so i yes. do that so yeah i was doing that before you were born i'm still yes. doing it and actually it i'm better now than i was then people really? like yeah you get better like even through, even through the many changes that i guess the culture has been through the the the, the, the i guess the millennials and everything in general like from mp not mp3s but what are the the um the new the new scratch what is it called oh my god i can't think rollers and all of this and all of that yes 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 i do girl like put it like this if they had controllers when i started djing i would have been on tv at three years old doing that if i was born into a world okay so i was born into a world where we had to create this it's a lot of people making money off of this stuff that right. we came up with. like all kind of companies even restream is a subject of something this thing we're broadcasting on was a thought yes. thing of that you know all of this technology itself like not a shovel tech or making iron tech but anything with the internet that stemmed from so but all these young dudes want to be like we the internet generation y'all didn't make it up y'all just was born into it we the internet generation homie we made it. 
Yeah. Y'all just the internet was, was born and when? It was in the 80s, right? It was, no, before, when was the internet born? When you were born, there was no internet. Right. So it was before the 80s then. There was no drum machines when you were born. There was no sampling. There was no, when you were born, none of that. We started, we didn't even have terms for looping. That was a DJ keeping a break beat going. That was a loop. Keep the beat going forever. And Red Castle rap, 10 dudes a rap, change the loop. That's a loop. DJs. All of that tech is mostly from what we did on two turntables, not even it. Then it translates. So there's another term for loop where you take a piece of tape and you tie it together. Back in the day, you would record audio on a piece of plastic. Right. And it's called tape. And you would tape it together with another form of tape and it would be a loop because it was continuous. Okay. Most tapes were beginning and end. Then you had to rewind them. But a loop could play forever. Right. Continuous. And so that's where that term comes, where they call it. All these terms they got in the tech, all these dudes think they hot shit. It's all terms that we made up. Like, I love hearing how hot young producers are and how dope the young guy is who don't even know that we made that thing you talk crap about Fruity Loops came from another thing that we made over here because yes. of this. Yes. Like, dude, I know more about from something. you than what you are doing. <laughs> Only Back. because of, but see, that's not for the young. They know this. It's the pen, all that stuff. Yes. It's the ones that come between them. The manipulators are saying, oh, hi there. But you know, you put some young producer with me, he gonna learn. Right. He gonna get better. You put me with anybody, I give a shit who it is. Uh, all, I give them all shouts. I'm like Kobe Bryant. Come see me. All you producers. Uh, London on the track. You oh. hot. Hit boy. You hot. Uh, who else is it? I have, other, I have the name. Um, what about Lex Luger? Super producer Lex Luger. I've never heard of him. He's hot. Come see me. D. Die Will. Jake One, G. Coop. Half the guys I just named off are white. Did you know that? No. And they got records out there. Yeah. So you know, we made a thing, and everybody benefits. It was, right. and there was the white guys in the beginning. Rick Rubin was the Beastie Boys' first DJ before they even created Def Jam. So he was in hip hop. He was white. So what? He was like us. It's, it's an inner city thing. Right. So anyway, from going from that, we got into music production. Okay. And that's where it changed. Like around that 82, I, 83, I got a drum machine and mm. learned how to use it and found out that I could play that drum machine at parties like records i could program records the records i got and make the beat longer so i could mix other stuff into it and then i said oh i could change the beat and then egyptian lover had a 808 drum machine and he would make up beats and say yes 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 you say yes 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 the nigga made a record they did that first they made the record after we should make a how do we get all of this on a record where people could hear it on the radio come to our parties it was for a commercial records are commercials for us they're like like this record i'm working on now this is just a business card to let all the cats know i'm hot come see me I'm hot, hot. or you know it ain't to get streams i got streams it ain't to get records placed i got records placed i'm 59. what i don't need any assistance in the music industry from anyone i'm already in like a tick i know everybody but the Talk that I, shit, OG. better themselves including myself i'm trying to be the greatest of whatever i can be so right now i'm working out i'm gonna be a robot in a I movie you no know, i'm i got a whole bunch of stuff going on i'm, I'm arnold schwarzenegger now <laughs> i know that's right i'm I know. The rock. dudes are little guys they might be more muscular but they it's Go try to fight Michael Jordan. He's so wide, you can't even grab around him. His shoulders are like this, like mine. Like what? They, you know, aliens. So anyway, that's why you can play, you know, I can play many different types of chords with these. Wow. And I can get my hand around 12 inch discs easily. 
Like it's alien technology. You just built. You just at the end of the day, you were built for this because everything, every transition you made through your life was something to level you up to another thing, to another thing. And it's just like all the experiences you've been through is leading you up into where you are today. And what you said, you still DJ. You still, oh, cannabis. Oh, and we'll, whoa, 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 whoa. We'll talk yeah, about we, that. Hey, we have us a brand that is a tobacco free hand roll. So this is not what you would probably expect to see to come out of this. Oh my God. See this glass tip? Listen. Yes. That's glass. Wow. Tobacco free. Is an extendo. <laughs> an XL. And it's tobacco free. I know my reefers. I'm a reefers. I'm a reefers uh, kind of sore. <laughs> this one's the Neo flavor. Wow. So, yeah, we can do anything we want to do. Every young person out there, I don't care what color. Color is, is a distraction. Like, I'm black and proud as hell, but it's still a distraction. I go in places thinking I'm black before I be thinking anything else. That's not a distraction. Uh, it's a, Some distractions are great. Yeah. But I don't got to think I'm black. Look at me. I think everybody knows I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> I don't gotta say I'm black and I'm proud. They're gonna be like, really? You're black? No. Nah. <laughs> that is man crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's more important to be intelligent and aware of your surroundings so okay. that you can help yourself and others. You know what I'm saying? You gotta yeah. help everybody around you, bro. Everybody, we're here. Do you know how leaders are made? A motherfucker's walking down the street. I see people follow me all the time. Now I'm the leader. Because I look back and there's people behind me. Right. Not because I said, I'm going to be the great da 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 da. I just start doing something and then other people do it and ask you questions. That's right. how leaders are born. They're they not made. Leaders are born. People who are creatively looking for things to do, they wander. And wanderers become leaders. Mm. And speaking so. of being a wanderer, um, how did you wander into Dr. Dre's life? Ah, you like that transition, huh? <laughs> Girl, you are so good. Virginia Beach, huh? <laughs> Got airplanes, though. I we knew. That your little dress on, you was sexy. I saw that. Shout out to Miss Hollywood. <laughs> uh, let me tell you, I met Dr. Dre, man. I had a good friend. So I, I after I DJ, so real quick on this club radio, right. they yes. moved about the club called Breaking. That's how big the club was. Right. So you hear these people, Shabadoo and Boogaloo Shrimp, because of the club break uh, radio. So anyway, right. I used to DJ Wasn't there. Wasn't it 87? Huh? I said, wasn't it in 87, if I'm not mistaken? No, 82, 83, but I met Dre in 87. Okay, so, that's okay. Yep. So what happened was I was DJing a club now called Paradise, which was even bigger, more. It's like 1500. It's like the tunnel in New York. It's like 1500 people on the dance floor. Mm. Oh, like 2000 people every Thursday. So I'm rocking this baby. It's mine. Right. So I uh, my buddy Dave, we used to do parties and just clown around. But I was doing music um, right. and scratching a lot. A lot of people stuff because the movie I was in the Chaka Khan I feel for you video. Yes. You know? So this dude, I told him I wanted to meet. Like I need to get a record deal. I don't know. <laughs> and he brought Dr. Dre to my house. <laughs> I was taking out the trash. This cat pulls up. All I see is a vet pull up and my boy. You know, you only see the person you know. Right. He never oh they go Dave and the vet. Dave wasn't driving. <laughs> but you know, you see your people, so he pulls up. What's up, man? And then I see Dre. Because they was listening to No More Lies when he pulled up, too. And this is like when it was out. Yeah, it was all cliche, the whole thing. It was dope. He pulls up. <laughs> Dre. What's up, Dre? I'm looking for somebody who can produce it. You know, who can control the maestro. Who can produce it? What'd he say in that rap? I'm a producer that can rap and control the mic flow. Yeah, I'm looking for somebody who can rap and control. No, I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> what? He's in there. For real? <laughs> uh, he said that he was looking for someone who could like be him. Mm -hmm. He needed somebody who could be him in the studio so he could just show up. 
he could be two places at once was what he told me that's what he right. told me of. so like there we enter that term ghost see like, i was never a ghost so i was visible to everyone right. some people don't speak on me as all i'm not mm. a ghost producer. i'm a producer that work with dr dre it's cool ask dre he'll say i work with glove I heard him say it on MTV back when niggas was saying he wasn't saying my name. And in 94, he was doing it. I didn't even know that till yesterday or last what? month. Yeah, when what? I posted it, when I found out. That that was MTV ain't even on TV anymore. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like. I mean, so, what? yeah, man, I was. no. So anyway, he, he pulled up. I said, OK, well, let me put this in the trash and come upstairs. So they come upstairs. And I had a little setup. My, uh, I had it in Sonic. It was no drum machines at this time. Uh -huh. Excuse me. There were drum machines, but they were beat boxes, like drums only, not MIDI control, like production center, like in a Kai. MPC. You hear the term MPC? Yes. Or, or, or yes, yes, SP yes, yes. None of those existed. That shit wasn't even a thought yet. Thought maybe. Remember, they got me with the space shuttle. So, uh, <laughs> hang on a second. Shout out to everybody that is tuned in. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you guys are following. Like, share, subscribe this video. www.allofhollywood.biz and we are back. You're going to probably see the water and power dude in the middle of my interview. Listen. <laughs> Peter, bro. I just saw you last week. It. Two weeks ago. Remember? I wasn't going to let you in the back. <laughs> Tell them to come on by, man. We here, man. We still using power. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, we uh raw and uncut. I love it. I this know, shows man. wait, this shows how human how human you are. You know, oh. at, like it, this shows the humbleness. This shows everything that's stripped away. Like all of your status has been stripped away and you are human at this very moment and I want people to see this that. Way I like, this is how we should all be. We're all human. So let's just be who we are instead of all that other stuff. We could all rent a nice car. We can all buy a booty. Why don't we just if you want to buy a booty, buy a booty but you can still be like who you are. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I don't want you to die over it. I heard some people in LA giving illegal booty injections and killing people. So don't do that. But do uh, that. if you don't got no booty, it's somebody out there that likes no booty. Just wait. <laughs> little booties get love just like big ones. I'm skinny. I got a little booty. <laughs> I know just how you feel. <laughs> and so after the PSA booties, we'll move on. After the electric company commercial, DWP going to come through. No matter what you're doing, zoom, zoom. So after... Dre goes, let me see what you got. I got this keyboard, an ESQ1 and a drum sampler. There was a sampler, the right. S9. I used to use that for drums and sounds, but I didn't have a pad drum machine yet. I played off the keys, but I had figured this out. Then they created the MPC, which S900 with pads. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway he checked out how i had it all rigged up and how i was going dude was like you or hired so he i said i got an r&b group so backtrack a bit mm -hmm. i produced ice t on a song called reckless it was the first big record we was on a breaking soundtrack at multi platinum awards that record like dude i wanted the whole nine right just like yeah. the fairy tale. and then and that was funny too because quick footnote they brought the record and it was it was four million and it was a one silver record, right? I said, that's not gold. I mean, <laughs> ah, this platinum It's better. We was like, take that back and bring us two gold records each. Like, or, or four gold. I want, because remember, I saw a gold record. Uh, I, didn't know. Uh, I was second place. I thought that was first place. Uh, I didn't know the word platinum, really, except for in making aircraft equipment and stuff it's like you don't what the hell it's expensive but pfft, ain't nobody right. sitting on a platinum record that's why we started talking about platinum records that's my generation remember solid gold was on tv when i was a kid right okay, okay. Is, we platinum there were gold they didn't even probably know that you could sell that many who knows but anyway that's the funny part about that so fast forward back to being with dre he was like after I did that thing with Ice, I didn't do no more rap. 
I was okay. trying to be, so I was scratching on in different studio sessions. I worked with a gentleman named Low Silas who had me with Rest in Peace. He was at MCA, vice president. He had me with Bobby Brown and Babyface mm. and all the different sessions and even Quincy Jones. And I was like, these dudes got money, bro. This rap thing ain't making no money like these cats. I, I'm messing with the you, every. It just seems like every story that you have, it's something that says, well, this these dudes got this. I want that. And you got it. <laughs> yeah, they got it. They sit right next to me. I'm right here like me and Quincy Jones was looking at the machines. Back then, we had just started syncing two tape machines together. And them two kept chasing each other. They would never sync. And we were staring at each other. I'm like, I'm waiting. He's like, yeah, no, huh? Like like that. Like, for real. It's like degrees of separation. So, and it was not, I did not lose. I remember. It was nice. Like, it wasn't like, who? That was who? Nah. It was fun. Wow. Just like you would imagine, like, working with that. On yeah. Patty Austin. So, uh, you know, Dre was like, cool. I said, I got an R&B group. You got to sign us to Ruthless then. And so he signed my group to Ruthless. 1988 or 80, 88, we signed to Ruthless. Right after- Is that the group? Poe Broke and Lonely. Yeah. Yep, that's I my got it on my paper. R.C. <laughs> Cruz, Crimson Monroe, and Mike Lynn. Them is my dudes. You've literally done it all. Like... You, <laughs> I'm about to. I'm about to be a robot, and then I'm gonna be acting. Then I'm gonna have done it all. I wrote a couple of books. I'm about to release. Wow. I write science. So uh, I got like a science fiction love story I wrote, and then uh, that's the one I'm a robot in. Okay. It's actually you, based on a real. You you started the process as far as like the visuals and getting your the getting the getting it down pack. So one of the projects is a comic. Okay. And I, yeah, I started already on the visuals with that. Uh, that one is like, you know how everyone has a documentary of sorts? Yeah. Mine is going to be not a documentary, but a alternate reality story about a world where music rules the world and all the rulers are music people. Like Beethoven was king of England and, you know, all of that, like us. And so the, also that means that the guy protect the nation are like spies and the weaponizing and the fighting and the skills and all that shit cia yes so i i'm in an agency called specter like ghosts huh whoa (laughs) and uh, i'm a training i'm older now so i'm a training officer but i was the top agent at my a i helped get a president elected Mm -hmm. and uh then they come after me because they want some, they got some questions. And so I don't want to answer. But the questions are about the song. What song? So there's a mystery about the songs I produced. Yes. Yes. There's credits that were or were not. I was going to touch but, that right next. Oh my God. Yeah, I can hear your thoughts. So I heard my that. question was how important is getting credit for the work you do? Because you work on the chronic and I listed them and I said, but some you didn't get credit. Is that still the case? What in the world? This is crazy. So remember, you can still ask that question, but to make a point, yes. it, it, it is this. So there's like, when you take a hammer and you bang it on the ground, yeah, you hear sound, right? Yeah. Yeah, but that ain't all that happens. It's a sound. It's a spark. The wave, airwaves around have been moved. Magnetism has been changed. Heat is generated. You might crack, so it's pressure. Like, this is just where I'm at with six things. So right. people think when something happens, only one thing happens. Like, I didn't get credit, but I got education. I got access. I got knowledge that is different from education. That's application of education. Mm-hmm. I was able to assist in groundbreaking events. And my name appears in the things that it needs to appear on. I, that's how the world works. My mm-hmm. name is on the item that's in the Library of Congress, which validates everything else I say. So it matters not if I got credit, if I'm I'm a noble man and I'm not known as a, if I say I did something, then I did it. Unless you can, you know, what the, what's the point? It right. doesn't matter if someone did or did not, or if it was a mistake or not, or, or whatever. It's no one's fault. If it's what happened is what happened. And I am what I am because of it. So there are songs that sometimes with lack of credit, 
comes lack of fiduciary. So in that case, sure. I believe all things under God get doesn't matter. Some of the things I'm working on, if you had any idea, the way you said it, you already know. Right. Working on what I did before is peanuts. It's like if you lost your wallet and it had ten thousand dollars in it, you just always thought about that trip where you lost it. Fuck that wallet in the ten grand and them credits I did or didn't get. Fuck whoever don't believe me and fuck whatever. I don't give a shit. Facts. I know. And I know what I got. And I know, Kanye, you're welcome. I know that I did that to help you. And you got, that's why it was done. So you took Explosive, made nine songs, and went on and became the great $6 billion richest man in America, Black. Good for mm. you. Him, you're welcome. If you say you were hit by Reckless, and that's why you decided to rap, if that's what inspired you to become the greatest rapper alive, basically, I mean, that's an argument. So at least you're in the argument. Me, I don't choose greatness or graders. I just see like-minded individuals. And so therefore, go do your thing. I don't have a judgment on anyone. If you rap your own lyrics, great. If you got a writer and he's dope, even greater. If that writer can write and it sounds like you did it, Yahtzee, damn it. Who cares? <laughs> it's music business, bro. It's not the fucking I wrote the song business. That's another business. Go do that. And in an, in a, in in another transition, um, you mentioned that it's no music industry anymore. It's turned into the music business. How did you how did you come to that term? So I'll tell you what I mean. Now, the fact of the matter is, music is still an industry because it can still lobby. You have to become an industry so that you can lobby for the government. You can become. You can choose who becomes president. But first, mm -hmm. you can't just be a business. You have to be a group of businesses, like-minded, create organizations, become an industry. <coughs> ASCAP, BMI, all these businesses, right. these groups that you think of these benevolent groups, they were created so that they can become an industry to manipulate the vote. That's mm -hmm. just business. It's good business. Any business, that's that's how you do it. It's cool. It's, it's not secret society manipulative. No, that's business. It's all around you, the people. So, I mean... I can tell you why you ever wonder why plants are around your house. Like you got grass, shrubbery, and in the house. Yeah. There's three different places for bugs to live before they get to your house. That's the only reason for a garden. It's got, that's why you got bugs in apartment buildings because they don't have gardens. Those oh. are apartments for bugs. Right. Now the ones that have great big gardens, that go up to the edge of the building and planters, they don't have bugs. That's just a footnote. It's the same thing. It's good business. That's why I brought that up. It's just like, those are things around you that are structured and manipulative that you're not even aware of. Wow. There's so many. The way that the air moves, it's a lot. So I think about things. I have lots of time to ponder. Yes, when and I love it. <laughs> well, you can do what you want. That's when it's key. So, you know, I'm not really... All that loss is not something I consider. It's all about gain. It's like, yeah. that's, it's, you know, I learned that if I don't like a particular music, it's just something that's not my cup of tea. That don't mean it's whack. That mean that it's, they dancing to it. It must not be whack. I can't right. dance. I can't do the polka or I can't do the this. But look at this packed. That just must be popping. I can't say it's whack. I can say I don't like it. So I'll have my own opinion that i sit on every day just like everybody else that's all it is i remember i got into a debate with a gentleman about slavery he was under the influence that and i use that term lightly that it didn't exist or it didn't happen or right things to the, there's a turn a thought going around that you know we made it up or something i don't know right but i mean it's funny when they even want to take that away from you but anyway I just told him, I said, look, bro, he was telling me, I got facts. I, po I post people in the, I said, everything you post, even that document from 1700, that's just a piece of paper somebody wrote on, bro. You don't know the support. That dude might have got crucified for writing that, and you don't know that. Somebody might have shot him for that lie, and you found the paper. Or right. it's true, and nobody believes it. It could go either way. Either way, it was that man's opinion, and everything you're giving me is just an opinion, just like mm -hmm. me. Mine is opinion. My grandparents told me that they were slaves. 
like I'm not that far from I'm 59. Right. My great grandparents were slaves. <laughs> so you can't tell me that slavery didn't exist. I got pictures, paintings of depictions where they were slowed into slavery in the Bahamas and yeah. Jamaica. And this is what I taught people. I'm sorry I'm on a rant. Oh no, go ahead, go ahead. But she was a secret dirty business. Everybody talk about where the boats, where is the this, where is it? The... Nigga, it wasn't no industry like they on the cover of dark. They got seven fast boats. They gonna sink them so they don't get caught. Where the words, where the paper, who keeps records? I know Coke dealers, they keep that shit here. Thousand keys over there, 1100 with Tim and 32 over here. And my mama owe me uh, <laughs> for two ounces. Like, that's it. They're not right. You know what you need paper for? This is made to memorize long strings of numbers. Back. How many phone numbers do you know when you, until you stop? You could probably count to 100 people's phone number you know, then you stopped learning them. Social security number, birthday, it's Those so many numbers. numbers. I bet you know your kids. I used to know my wife's, yes. my father's, like what? I know all that and I'm learning every day. Like this yes. thing is not used, nowhere near to its capacity. Plus, this you is create thirty-eight oh, yeah. years in here. This is thirty-eight years in here, and you have Girl. you have fifty-nine. And check this out, though. This is the other part. While you're doing all this thinking and talking, you're growing. Your eyelashes are growing. Your hair is monitored. Your breathing is natural. Your nose, your teeth, your eyes are blinking. You know, we run fuck a computer. We run circles around a computer. They could do none of these things. This hair just moved, and I felt it and scratched. Like, huh? Like what kind of machine? And we're electronic. Yeah. What do they do when the dude drop dead? His heart not beating. What do they do? Put electricity to him. Zap. Yep. Who told you you weren't an electric? We're the greatest robots walking. Yeah. We are androids. They zap them every day to bring you back. They don't say, here's some plasma. And then they come back to life. Right. Sometimes they because the breathing stopped. But the heart, it didn't stop. See, when they're they doing that, heart. the heart is, they breathing. You ain't breathing. So, as back to what I said, all those things happen. I learned about record industry business. The reason mm -hmm. industry is different in my term was, back in the day, I'll give you a quick story. I'm working on, after the chronic we did, Doggy Style, Snoop's album. So, after we finished Snoop's album, we used to record everything onto these master reel tape remember i told you tape yes so yeah. the tape is uh was a, a half inch tape that we would take to mastering to create the actual cd files which they call now files uh -huh. so i'm holding the master it's only one and i got a razor blade you see this like this this is dangerous as this burning blunt <laughs> i got a razor blade i got suge here and Jimmy Iovine here, for those of you who don't know, Jimmy Iovine is like 10 times more powerful than Suge and meaner, just shorter. And he won't kill you. But that don't mean he won't come up missing. <laughs> Suge, bully. They standing over me. Now, you know me, right? I grew up, I've been tall all my life, so it's hard to bully a dude. I'm, I don't have that mentality. Right, 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 right. He's going to beat me up or something, but I'm not. You're just going to keep beating me up. <laughs> my never give you what you're asking for. So you either get tired of hitting me or I learn how to fight and beat you up a couple of times and it's cool. Thanks. But either way, it's going to be a fight. So they was like, so glove. So Jimmy, this is Jimmy. So glove, you think you can move a little faster? We got, now look, we've been working on this shit all this time. Dr. Dre sitting right over there. These motherfuckers wait till Chris the glove got the tape to try to apply pressure, right? So here comes this nigga. So glove, you know, we got, uh, two planes on the tarmac, fifteen thousand dollars an hour, and we got ten uh, cities waiting on diesel trucks that are going to go out this record shipping platinum. Could you hurry up? And then Sug is like, whatever he said, sound like Charlie Brown. <laughs> so I looked at both of them. I was like, I got, and I was smoking. No, I wasn't. Yeah, doggy style. I was smoking weed, so I know I had a. <laughs> I'm like this, razor blade, joint. Y'all want it now or y'all want me to finish it or you want me to fuck it up because I got fire and ice. Like, right. you have it 
or you could leave me alone and let me finish what I'm doing. Like, go tell Dre to hurry up. Right. Like, I got the razor blade, dog. I can really fuck it up for us and make us have to go a few more hours. Right, right. But I'm not that bold. But I say, yo, you guys want me to do this or you just want to try to scare me? Like, I'm right. not going to move any faster. Because Dre know that's why I'm over there with the razor blade. He know that they can't rattle me. Nobody going to. This shit here is way more important than anything that any of it's like being that's what made me come with that spy shit it's like you're gonna die to make sure it's done because right. it's forever what I'm talking about this forever that's why they used to change the deadline tv business you make the deadline or you lose your show mm -hmm. radio record business we move that shit ain't no such thing as a deadline when we done <laughs> try to tell us when to give it to you and it gets later Mm -hmm. I remember Reckless, they was like, so the way I did Reckless with Ice-T was I was DJing at the, we were filming and I was DJing. And so in between scenes, the producers were talking to my girlfriend at the time, Lisa, she heard them. And she was like, go tell them that you produce music. And I had just bought a drum machine like that day. Right. I was like, uh, but I don't. She was like, well, you play the key piano and you can, you got a beat machine. Go tell them you produce music. They talking about hiring Soul Sonic Force. So I was like, hey, I do music and I'm the DJ. Who better person to do it than me? Boom, what? you got it. <gasps> 20 grand per scene. This is 1983. <laughs> that was like 100 grand per scene today. God damn. <laughs> right? Knock them out. I hired this white guy, Dave Stores. I remember back then I was making bootleg vinyl records of scratching. Remember, I wanted to do Grandmaster Flash and Wizard Steel, so I made one. It was called Scratch Dance. So, how, Scratch Dance. How can you make? How is that possible? I know yeah. how to bootleg a CD in the, in the cassette tape, but a vinyl? Everybody was bootlegging CDs and tapes. The CDs didn't exist yet. It was just tapes, mixed tapes. We was making mixed records. <laughs> That's, That's where, like, uh, you ever heard of breakbeat? Yeah. That came from the shit we would, they would just take a beat and then we we showed them the vinyl route. That's from that eighties DJ shit. Cause I had to play them. Right. Wow. So, that was the whole thing. Imagine that was my MP3. Only it cost you two hundred bucks to get one. You know, not including studio time. That's after you finish, and it's recording. Two hundred bucks to make it from a tape to a piece that you can play. <laughs> so, anyway. Hey. After I tell them that I can make the music, but they say, okay. So I do the scenes, they love them. I do stuff for Missing in Action, Chuck Norris coming, all this work. And then they go at the last minute, hey, can you make like a talking record for one of those things you did? Like a, because that's who's rap, who right. talk, the right. rap talker. He was actually called Rap Talk. That was his credit. Rap Talker, Ice T. That's what they call it. So that's how old we are. Yeah. So that's how like, Slavery shit, rap talker. It's like it's hella ancient. <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, okay, so I said, okay, yeah, I could do it. So I called my boy. I brought up those records because when I was making those records, I met a guy, my boy Victor Flores and Carlos Mangala, who helped me make those records. They introduced me to a dude that owned the studio, Dave Stores. So mm -hmm. I went and met Dave Stores. And I remember I could play the keyboard and do this programming, but I ain't know nothing about producing. I didn't even right. know what the studio was. So I go to a first time in the studio was in a recording studio with me paying. So I go to the studio. No, that's not true. The first time I went in the studio was with Breaking and Entering. And that's when I went in the studio. I was like, ah, oh, this is dope. But I really feel like Breaking and Entering, for some reason I feel like that she was after. Anyway, I digress. So mm -hmm. they said, can you make the song? I said, yeah. So I call up Dave, get the studio for Friday. I go in there, we take the beat, flip it into a song. Call up Ice. Can you come to the studio? I'll pay you to rap on this thing I did. Yeah. <laughs> we come through, break him off. Boom. He makes Reckless. And then I scratch on it. Like he made the song, then I scratched on it. I just scratched on it first. He rapped about me. I was like, he rapping about me. I don't have to cut up. So <laughs> uh, I don't have to cut up. <laughs> oh, 
dope. So, because I was the artist. Right. It was okay. A he was rapping on it. See, it was like Eric B and Rakim. It was, it was you know, that's how I go. Right. So, they should have said Chris the Glove and Ice T on the fucking credit. They fucked it all up. But anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, go back. So, I say that to say, we did that in six hours, right? So the record company comes. They call us. So when can we hear the thing? Can we uh, call us back in a few hours? So they bugging us, right? Mm -hmm. So my Ice T was like, tell them to bring some food. <laughs> so the white dude was like, tell them to bring some chicken. He wanted some chicken. I said, tell them to bring a Kentucky fry. So they said, okay. This is like five in the morning. They went and found a Kentucky Fried Chicken somewhere on in Hollywood or North Hollywood and showed up at six in the morning with a bucket of chicken. He was like, did I got any drinks? No. Ice-T said, close the door. Close the thing. So they went and got the drinks, gave him the soda, gave him the, the chicken, and closed the door. We didn't let him come in. <laughs> That's a deadline. Like, that's your deadline, buddy. We'll send it to you when we're done. So <laughs> Y'all was calling the shots. We wasn't going to let them tell us when it was ready. How they know? They don't know Facts. what it is. Facts. You cake before? No, but I know when yours is ready. <laughs> That's what it be sounding like to me. <laughs> like, for real, people will tell me, all right, that's done. <clears throat> or that's not done. Right. Nigga, this is a beat in a loop. I ain't putting a bass line. The, a, the kick drum is the bass. And I got a tone on it that matches the, you paying attention, the bass and the sample are in pitch. It's magic, nigga. I do magic. I'm not playing with y'all dudes over here with just doing that. I got you other things. Rest I got a masterpiece. Yeah, it's layers, man. I mean, I watch Kung Fu movies and I'm telling you, I was young and we was bad. Mm. Um, but like, the dude with this, the kung fu dude that's doing this, mm -hmm. you bring your badass army up there and he's do doing this with one hand and whooping everybody with <laughs> this hand with no effort. Like, this, the way I move it, he'll hit a dude like this, boom, and he'll fly all the way across the earth. And he's like, <laughs> your styles are very attractive. And then one dude might get him to do this. And that's it. He's stroking his beard, the whole his white beard. <laughs> so the tell me about they fruity loops and they tricks with they they compression and what they're doing and side chaining and all this. And I'll be going like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because then I go to the studio and say, look at this wall and show them all the shit they seen pictures of on hey. the wall. These are the plugins because they plug in. You <laughs> should see the electric bill. Turn that one on. Oh, forget it. It's like, it's not even doctorate. It's like magic. Now, I walk into a studio and I'm one of very few people who know how to work the shit. Dude, it's amazing. Mm. You should, you know, people honor you and you, oh my God, he's going to turn on the AMS digital delay. The $12,000 delay box that they got two of them that nobody uses anymore. Right? <laughs> like, He's going to fire up this wall of, because nobody does it, man. And they, if you use that and get it right, put that shit in your Pro Tools, buddy. Oop. Delete that part. <laughs> that from the, uh, from the wizard for you, bro. You can, you can do it. Hey, we built those big ass studios for a reason. It was, everybody had a home studio even back then. It was the same new. All of a sudden, Cass is like, I got a laptop up. You just didn't have them in laptops. You had to buy a Tascam 4-track. You didn't know where to go to get that. You didn't even know what it was. So you couldn't have a studio. You had to learn about studio to have a studio. You didn't just have to get a laptop and a, and a YouTube video and a plug-in. I saw a guy read a thing. He said, I finally made money as a producer. I sold my laptop and headphones. I was like, you finally made money. You spent money on all the electricity. You tried to do all this. You still in the hole, homie. You got music in that. I used to tell guys when I was trying to help them with um, selling their music, mm -hmm. us producers, I'm going to include myself, 
they have an issue with parting with these things for some reason. Me, I have learned they are like sand in the sea. <laughs> Wait, where's the camera at? <laughs> need, like, bruh, you, I heard, <laughs> I've heard this at, ah, uh, I got a song for the scene. The guy's playing the song. And they go, oh, we, that's not really working for me. You got another one? What you mean? You don't like that? They turn it up. They start moving. You're not feeling that? It's different in it's the like, studios now. When a person play that, they say, hmm. I say, I got 50 more. Here's another one. You like that one? I have three others. I have alternates. Unmute the one below it. Is that better? What about that one? You can't take that shit personal, bro. You got to get the emotions out the music. Buddy. Big fact. And then I have to tell these guys, how many songs you got in your hard drive? Oh, 100. You ain't. No, I'm going to be my publishing. I said, let me tell you something about your publishing, bro. Every time you play one of them songs, they're not making you no money, are they? No, they cost you money, bro. When you play it, it's 25 cents. Like you're playing, you're playing your music and you're paying an electric bill. Mm. Let that sink in. Like that's like 1,500 bucks. You over here having a luxury lifestyle, bro. You can't afford that. You better sell one of them shits. What's wrong with you? Get 1,500 bucks. Oh, fuck the publishing. What? Let me tell you a super duper secret about music publishing. That's just money they made up to pay the people who made the paper. So back in the day, they printed music. They had to publish it like you publish a book. Sheet music. So this is before CD. That's why CD is a form of sheet music. See, they tricked us. They took that form and made it into publishing. But that's not, you can't publish a book on a CD. Now you can with an audio book. But before, when I'm talking, there wasn't no books on CDs. Now there mm -hmm. was some manuals on there that you had to drag and drop onto your desktop. <laughs> <laughs> you feeling me? That's the book. I, so they put that in there as publishing. This is the secret. If you own a master, you pay people publishing. I rather pay publishing because that's not even 10 percent of the master's fee like if i make a dollar it's like 10 cents goes for the entire project they split it up and prorate it so every dollar i get one percent of it goes to the public or 10 i'm sorry i said dollar mm -hmm. but anyway I'd rather get 90% and let y'all fight over that little 10. Here, y'all take all the publishing. How about that? Everybody say, oh, you give me my publishing? 100%. <laughs> now, sign this so I can go move because I own the master. Publishing money is different. You don't get paid every time the master is used. You get time every... So this is the difference. When a master is used in a movie, that is not a published document. That movie is owned by someone who is renting it or leasing it to people to play in theaters. It's like one of one. It's just many copies all out. That's why when you get that shit, it's one movie. They, they're they not mad at all the millions of people. It's one person, one movie. Like, this my blunt. I'm going to sue you, even though I'm a big-ass movie company. That's my blunt. I need it. You know what I mean? That's the gift. Yeah. People don't understand that. Oh, wow. They're big companies. Why are they worried about this music in the movie? They own it. It ain't the us, it's Instagram don't want to pay. So they block it. They block you from using it. And you write all this BS, it don't help. They don't pay. It's nobody but them. When they decide to monetize it for us and pay us, then everybody can use music freely. But mm. they don't want to do that. They want to take all the money. No one wants to pay the guys that got them there. Kill the messenger. Oh, no, not kill the messenger. <laughs> That's, what they do. That's what the Romans used to do. You kidding me? That's why they mm. ran out of money. Why do you think, look, why do you think they lost? They thought, they had some practices that was bad. They was killing messengers and the dogs was carrying the gold and all kind of crazy shit. Now they're gone. <laughs> now they're gone. That, mm. That's, mm. That's something else. That's that. That oh. is. Whew, that's a handful. 
<laughs> so you were going to ask me about credit. You said what? I'm sorry. You were going to ask me about credit. Yes. Oh, that the initial question was, um, how important is getting credit for the work you do? Let's get credit for the work you do. If the case comes to where you won't get credit, whether it's because your life is being threatened literally or because it's something that you just won't accept to do and you cannot remove your stuff without some doing some things you won't accept, like killing another person or you just got to walk away sometimes, and you will find yourself in a situation where you cannot control. I recommend to do the best you can. And what I tend to do in that case is try to glean something from it that's good for me that nobody else got. Like, okay, since you're going to take that, I'm going to take something from this that I'm not going to tell you. Like, for everything that I haven't received credit for, I got some information or some learned thing or a skill that from that person right. that I should be paying them for, basically. Right. But in, in like, for instance, like me and Dre, the thing I do with Dre was that I introduced him to the SSL and, and, and this lifestyle of making music and how to do this. And right. he elevated when he got on that. And, you know, that's cool. But everything else is just what people say. You know mm. what I mean? It's not really what it is. You know, so I believe you must get your credit. If you can't get your credit, get something. Some right. people get money. Uh, no such thing as ghosts. Everybody exists. But some people just aren't mentioned above a whisper. Right. And yeah. I fall into that category of don't I can hear my name being mentioned. If you mention me louder than a whisper and you don't want to see me, I may show up. And I'm not violent or nothing, but sometimes my personality just, people don't want to see me. Right. So don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you heard him. <laughs> and speaking of some of the credit, um, the firm phone tap, you are, um, you have credit for that as well. And then, um, you do some of the reality shows or you've done some of the reality shows, Tiny and uh, Tiny and Toya, Frankie and Nephi, Monica Still Standing and, and a few others. Um, can you elaborate on um, how you got into that side of like the, the reality show or the reality side? Well, what happened was I got into the television business. So I, that's funny you tuned in on that. But I did the Parkers, you know, Moesha, one on one girlfriends. What? Like, but you got the realities. I was like, going to say that's because of the life. But yeah, I did the Parkers. My boy did Moesha. And my other boy did Girlfriends. Shout out to Marcus. We all did work for a gentleman. And and we were termed ghost writers in that comp business too. We were ghost composers. In that business, I was not seen. I was a ghost. I didn't even exist. I got a check. No credit. But I did five seasons of the Parkers, every piece of music that you hear, except for songs that are complete. Some of them. Like people you know, Ice Cube or something, I didn't do that. But um, that's just the Parkers. Like, there was All of Us, which is Will Smith's show, One on One. Like I said, Girlfriends, I got some music. But then I got music on over 100 TV shows. Are like, you so serious? What I, was, huh? I said, are you serious? Yes, yeah, so what I did was I had brain surgery right around the time that we were going to do Eminem's album. So when I got the brain surgery, I had to, I left at the same time I left Aftermath. And so when I was recuperating, I wanted to do something like that was equivalent to like I needed to make music like on steroids, any kind of music. I had to see if everything was working. You know what I mean? Oh, right. So, television music is very challenging because imagine if you're doing a cartoon, you ever watch a cartoon and they go like 17 countries, mm -hmm. like in two minutes. They in a car and it's like, imagine if we go here and they're going through the map and they go all over the world. And the way that you know where you at is the music. So you got 17 pieces of music that you had to make for that two minute thing. Now each piece of music could take you a few hours. So you start to see the magnitude of me. Right. Okay, so I did a show called All of Us. That was Will Smith's life. Like uh, my boy Shakes was actually the star but it was Will's show. So, and Tisha Campbell was in it. So, when I do that music, 
and for one on one, I would have to turn in. It was 22 what we call musical cues. That's 22 places where music would play. So in those 22 cues, I'd have to do what was called an alternate, which means you got one, two choices. So that number turned into 44, right? So some of them are one second or even a split second, half a second, blah, 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 just a note. But most of them are about 10 seconds and above. So I got to make 44 pieces of music, all original every weekend just for that show i was doing one-on-one -on -one, all of us uh the parkers eve cuts um at one point the guy i was working for had all the shows on upn from five to ten. Oh my and, my my yeah he got rich <laughs> yeah he was paying me 800 but it's cool. That's just like having um, unlimited minutes after nine o'clock. You understand me? That's that's that feeling right there. <laughs> well, this is what it was though. The funny part you say that so unlimited. It was from five to ten. So mm -hmm. like the news come on at ten. So five to ten is one, two, three, four hours. Five hours. Five to six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight to nine. Nine to ten. Five hours. So we could get. See now you're onto my secret. <laughs> so when everybody's making records and shit, I was doing music for TV so I can occupy time of day. So people, you spending days with me, you're in there watching the Parker's Girlfriends one-on-one doing homework. I'm playing all the music. You can turn the radio and hear a few songs, but I've been bombarding you with music for hours through the TV. <laughs> so I took that on and it was fun. And we, it got to a point where almost, we were almost the radio for TV, like when you hear music on any show, something of ours was playing. It was like that. So television is an alternate reality. It's like here. It don't exist, but you can see it. Mm -hmm. You can go there and be there, but you can't bring it here. You know what I mean? Even when you're looking at it in real life being filmed, it doesn't look like television. It just looks like people here with cameras and shit. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So being this thing, me and you, this wall, this whole thing, this is this thing. So <laughs> it's a trip how we take that thing and nobody sees it as a whole nother universe. But I do. I want to be that. I'm Dr. Dre over there. Mm -hmm. And here, my music play more than anybody. <laughs> yes. yes. I got music on fire. I got music on. I did music for the composer. So this is how, how I do it. The guy who composes the music on Empire, mm -hmm. I sent him like 10 tracks with stems of musical elements. Like right. he can separate them any kind of way he wants. He can use the drums, he can use the percussion, he can use the music, any way. That's how I outfit. Like cats be talking about they got a bag. I, I put the shit in the bag. I'm the guy in the bag going, here you go. <laughs> I was in Dre's bag. Here, take explosive. Here, take hello. Stranded on death row. You need another one? Here you go. Take fame. Like, but it's cool. Like, you just gotta be willing to do what you do. I like being in the bag. But I mean, you know, I'm also me. So that's like another me. Right. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. and i'm i'm loving this interview but it's definitely um coming to a close but i have more things to talk about but <clears throat> i know that let's see the radio crew what i i read something about the radio crew what is that and who did that and also involve radio crew was like a couple of like me and ice T. we worked at radio and then the two owners of the club KK and AJ, and then some of our friends like Egyptian Lover. I used to take him to radio. He didn't really DJ there, but he was there with me, and he would play records. As soon as I turned my back, he on a record. As soon as he turned his back, I'm on a record. It didn't matter. We was young, but he's not officially like, like I'm Uncle Jim's Army, but not officially. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Officially, they know. You're honorary. Like, you know, I'm a K Day Mix Master officially, but unofficially. Right. I'm in every crew. 
It's like I'm the boogeyman. Everybody start a crew, gloves in it. Mm. And we didn't even talk about how how you actually got your name too. Uh huh. I said, and oh, we didn't I, talk about how you, because I, I I heard this also that you were given the name just you you were. Let, I'll let you tell the story because I, I I know then I got the knowledge, but I want to hear from you. Let, let, <laughs> all right, it's Hollywood. I see you. <laughs> so when I went to go DJ at this club radio that I've been talking about, which was. Right really the first hip hop club, like the hip hop clubs in New York in right. LA. And okay. so they made the movie breaking from the club. So when that, when I went to go, I actually didn't know it, but I was applying for the job. I used to deliver. Remember I told you I had to learn about the equipment. So yeah. once I learned about the equipment that I needed to DJ, I learned how expensive it was. Right. Cause mm -hmm. like I had got some turntables. Remember that student loan? Yes. I got, turntables in a mixer but it was not the turntables they were the b as in boy one so b1 means belt drive 1200s are direct drive you mm. need 1200s to do what i do you can't do what i do on the unless you real light a finger which i had to learn to be so that the, when you scratch on the record and they don't go and everybody look at you because the beat mm -hmm. slowed down you better be good so i learned that that but I also learned how expensive they were. So I used to deliver equipment for this company and they would let me use equipment for free for my party so I could make my little money. Cause mm -hmm. I wouldn't make enough to buy the gear. It's like a hundred bucks for the party and it's like 150 bucks for the damn setup. But I was building a legend, so I needed that gear. Right, facts. So I went and delivered some speakers to this club radio and the owners came out and said, hey, we heard you a DJ. And I was like, yeah, I'm the best DJ you ever heard of. And I used to wear these great big oversized gloves, like with feathers, not feathers, but like the super soft, because I used to pinch my fingers with any other kind of glove. These things had super cushion. They were really like Mickey Mouse gloves. Gotcha. Thurwin Vegas, they pinch you. So they was like, I didn't even think about it. They was looking at me. I was talking. I'm tall with these big ass gloves. I'm talking. <laughs> I bet it was silly as fuck. I didn't even think about it. I'm talking, I'm talking. And then so they said, look, what's your DJ name? I said, DJ Chris or DJ C. They was like, like it was cool, right? right. I was good at it. I remember I told you. It was like, they did what you did. <laughs> we'll have a name for you when you come back. You play at 11. So when I came back, they had a marquee and it said 11 o'clock, the glove, the glove. I said, that must be me. You could have been somebody in the bathroom. Yo. Did you DJ with the gloves on? Please don't tell me you DJ with the gloves. Not those gloves, though. I, I, so I went there. I didn't know my name was Glove. The okay. Glove. After I left, I came up with a glove that I could wear. Back, I was a snowboarder. So we used to wear ski gloves. Well, when you wear ski gloves, you put on a glove called an after ski glove first. Right. Then you put a ski glove. It's like an insulating glove. Right. So when you take them off, the after ski glove is usually really sparkly because it's got this insulating material on it. It's real shiny. It catches the lights. So I started, I said, oh, this is dope. So I cut some holes in the front so I could touch the record. Nobody could see the holes. They think I'm wearing a glove. So I'm DJing with this glove on and it catch the lights, all that. Shortly thereafter, Midget ass singer named last name Jackson <laughs> learning how to moonwalk from Jeffrey Daniel and them in the corner with a mask on. He goes and performs like a month later. It's it's like May 1984 or 85, something like that. Right. He did the where he moonwalks and he wears the glove. Right. And ever since then, Michael Jackson had a glove. The bastard stole <laughs> I say that with a straight face. That goes back to the spaceship working. <laughs> I was like, motherfucking spaceship? These niggas that made the space shuttle and this nigga that stole my glove and got famous. Now they're calling him the gloved one. And then the basketball player named Gary Payton tried to bite it a few years later. Like, y'all are all biters. <laughs> this is 
the hip hop man, you can't be a buyer. No, you can't. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Glove, glove. Wait till I see Gary Payton. I'm gonna say, nah, you ain't glove. You you glove, son of glove, just like son of Ben. <laughs> Dad. And I'll do it. <laughs> I also <laughs> say straight face. Go ahead, I'm sorry. With a, with a straight face. With my 59-year-old ass. I haven't dunked a ball in a while, but I was dunking when I was 52. No what? problem. Yeah, I was tripping. Like, everybody saw my Michael Jordan was dunking. When I did it, he did a dunk. And everybody said, he's 50 dunking. And I was like, fuck, that dude made the dunk. What are you talking about? He will forever dunk. <laughs> well, I'm not Michael Jordan. Where's my press? I'm older than him, Duncan. Damn it. <laughs> Where's my credit? That you need to get a T-shirt that say "Where's my credit?" Where's the press? I need credit. I just needed people to write about me. There's another guy that didn't even play pro basketball that dunked the ball at 52. Like a lot of it, I was like, like niggas can't dunk at 50. What is this? Magic is probably laughing like, I'm 60. I'm dunking. What are you talking about? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yes, uh, girl. Well, let's, <laughs> let's get into this question. Uh, what is some advice that you can give those um that are just now getting into this thing called entertainment and or continuing with this thing called entertainment? Uh, okay. If you're already in this, okay. Because if you're not, don't get in it. <laughs> That's really the best advice I got. <laughs> no, really, though, I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to say all of the bad things or all of the great things. I'm going to just say this. It is not for the faint of heart. And... Don't expect loyalty. Don't expect appreciation verbally. You may get it and people think it and feel it, but you may not ever hear it. Or you may. And don't believe everything you hear because you heard that term gas lighters. They need to the term gassers. People that just pump you up and tell you, yeah, you dope, you dope, you dope. I do that. But when you need it, like a coach, like you need to hear this, you're dope, by the way. And sometimes I get excited and it may seem like gas, but I'm not a gasser. Right. Um, I've been called that because I'm so excited about it when I do it. But when I tell you something about yourself, it, it's truthfully from the heart. So man, don't take people, you know, criticism is just what it is. It's criticism. It's not to be good. So if somebody's being critical, it ain't nothing positive, constructive criticism. What the fuck is that? Hey, man, you look like shit. That's constructive criticism. How about, hey, man, why don't you go home and change up? You probably could, you know, let me help you out. I know where you're going. You know what I mean? Come here. Instead of, you're like, like shit. That's crit the constructive criticism is no criticism and come and help me. Mm. So when people are being critical of your music, ignore them. When anybody says anything that you disagree with, pretend like they're not there. Mm. When anybody, anytime somebody, because it's you, bro, who can tell you what you know? Even me. You know, don't listen to nobody but yourself when it comes to this music, unless you need knowledge or assistance in something where you can gather knowledge, you can apply however you want. I'm happy to tell people anything, but you know, they got these people in our lives. We make music, you make something, you got a podcast. I'm sure you got a cousin going, girl, man, you don't need to be doing that shit. Or, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You spending money on that? Why you whoop, whoop, whoop? That right there is, this thing here is a nuclear uh, uh, universe. It's not nothing like a bomb. It's way more powerful. Anytime somebody using it against you, it's fucked up. So like, you gotta think twice as hard. If people would just think good thoughts, let me tell you what you can do. Okay, so I don't like that she's, what is it that I don't like about, so I'm the person, girl, you tripping. You sh you know, that's just costing you. You need to be spending more time with your kids. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to imagine having a conversation with you telling me, man, this podcast is so successful. I can spend more time with my, I'm spending more, I am spending more time with my kids 
and I just bought a new house. Because if the issues that I have with you, I can fix them by seeing you with them instead of using my brain against you in a negative manner, bring you down. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, you call me a girl or dude or whatever. I got this house I want you to see. And that's the conversation I had with you. Right. Better, right? Yes. You critical? Because yes. look, when you're critical of others, others are critical of you. Probably more so. So I choose to lead with love because I'd rather people be more love for me. Probably more so. Jesus said a thing, don't, I'm not going there, but he said this, do unto others. Like that don't sound biblical. That sound like smart shit. Like I learned about this law, right? If you take a rock and you throw it as hard as you can, it comes back and smacks you in the face. It's a thing called a boomerang. They call it karma, but it's a boomerang. So instead of throwing rocks, throw flowers with no sticky points on them. And they'll come back soft and lavish. You'll love it. Or if you like fucking fruit, throw soft fruit so you don't get knocked out. Like, for real. Like, you like fruit, don't throw uh, coconuts. Throw fucking grapes. Something soft. No, you can get pelted with a grape. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying, though. Right? Like, don't throw the shit that's going to fuck you up, man. Right. With love. Even when you get ready to hate, be like, and this is the key. You can catch yourself. It's cool. That's the point. It's okay. So you go, oh, man, everybody thinks it. Man, these motherfuckers. I mean, this motherfucking glove, he tripping. Wait. Because you know it's two people. So the person that's, you can say, hey, hold up. He's not tripping. We just don't need to, we don't agree, but it's cool. Or, you know what I mean? Instead of being a, just be like, no, it's cool. And you'll see your life starts to level off in front of you, not behind you. <laughs> Everything we do is for tomorrow. Say that, say that one more time for those that ain't here. <clears throat> Everything we do today is for tomorrow. Every word is a seed that lands in soil. Every move is a seed that lands in soil. Every non-move is a seed that lands in soil. How you want your day to be tomorrow is up to you today, bro. That's it. People be thinking it's all that. You ever see these, man, they be telling us stuff like, you hear these terms like positive thinking or think rich, grow rich. Like these are not, these terms are because they disguise knowledge in these kind of terms, bro. Mm -hmm. Think rich, grow rich. Ask every rich man, did he think he was rich first? Or was he rich first and then he thought it? Nah. No. <laughs> if you do that, if you be positive, like not just the bullshit, be for real. Do it just with yourself. Do it right. for yourself. Think right. that, like, start the shitty shit. Like, everybody does it. I do it. I'm doing it now. Something. Check yourself. Try to be noble. Say what you're trying to say in an honorable way, you know, in your mind. You'll find that you don't, I don't cuss as much as I used to. Just because I don't think like that. It's sick. Right. It's like your your mouth represents where your heart is. Your heart rep- your mouth represents where your mind is. Your heart is something else. Mm. You know? Yo, my, sometimes your mind and heart connect. When that happens, shit is normally a baby is born or something. Ooh. Yeah, when your mind and heart connect, that's the seven-layer liquid crystal oscillator. Digital. This thing here is... Okay, so you ever notice... You have to get all the way down to why God, and then something happens. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's that deepest emotive feeling. As soon as you trigger this, the heart for or here now, because I'm in an alternate reality, I hear that the heart is here, not here. When I was a kid, they said, "Put your right hand over your heart, ready mm-hmm. to begin." I pledge allegiance to the flag. Nobody did this. Right now, the heart. I see them just here. When I learned the AED is here and here on the side, you can't see, but it's here. So I feel my heart seem like it's in the middle now. So that's the way it is. Airplane engines are in a different place where we were, where I come from. They weren't in front of the wing. They were behind the wing. But hey, I know I sound like a crazy person. Just here to say. 
you yeah, know it's, things are different there's time machines people change shit it's subtle change every day you learn something that changes everything you knew yes yeah, for so, sure that's not a time machine do you think that the past is alive or dead right now oh right now like because the past right. is oh, that's a i don't know how to answer that question yeah you did it a year ago that's dead gone right yeah what if you did something to somebody a year ago and mm. they look at day your past is living in their mind every day they won't let it die i'm gonna find that chick i'm gonna find her yeah whether it's good or bad it could be a dude that's gonna marry you i'm gonna find her the past is alive every minute mm. ain't none of this. this none of this is what it looks like it's now it's always now never tomorrow it's always today tomorrow's dead that's coming ain't gonna get here it's gonna all that's why the word is for that thing it's tomorrow today is for where we are we live right. in today we don't right. live in tomorrow and every mm. day is the same day. It's just, you can make a, you can't change your life every day. If you wake up, you can change your life. Don't That's do it true. today. Do you get tomorrow? Do it tomorrow. Tomorrow comes today? Today. Again. It's today again. It's Groundhog Day. I bet you your alarm goes off the same every day. Yep. You guys don't even see it. It's just like the movie. It's the same day. Mm. Sometimes you change locations, you think. <laughs> you ever how we move? We hop in a car and sit on our ass and go far. We hop in a plane and sit on our ass and go far. Man, we ain't going nowhere. All that shit is moving to us. We sit mm. on our ass everywhere. <laughs> Dre came to my house. Oh, yeah. And you know yeah. what? I went to that club radio, but everything else that I got in music came to me like mm -hmm. that. God brought it straight to where I was because he knew I couldn't. How am I gonna but, you, but you know what came to you? Your name. Same thing. It was it came to me. It was given to me. Here, I got a name for you. Oh, you want to be a DJ? I'm about to do. God is amazing. He said, I'm going to do this. Yeah. See, everybody thinks this, you can see. So when you have an idea of a concept or a painting or something you make, do you are you an artist of any kind? I am. I Actually, I'll show you one of my pieces. Hold on just a second. You're a painter. How did I do that? I make um, rolling trays. Well, I started to make rolling trays. Wow. And. Yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah, that's dope. Oh, yeah. See, so when you sat down to make that, you knew what you was going to make. Yes. You well, no, the actually, actually, the first thing was the lips. But I mean, before. You finished, up, but yes, but yes, I could. Yes, yes, yes. Because before you finished, you had a vision of yes. completion. Yes. At some point yes. while you're making. So that's the thing I'm talking about. Like yes. when you think of that thing, it's complete. Yeah. So it wasn't going to be, and then you just put it down. That's the same way with the music and everything else. When I hear it, it's done. So I just pull it out and put it on in art where we can hear it. It's like right. that you that you pull those colors and made those shapes in that box. Yes. Now we see it. That's art. When you come with art, it's the two connecting. Yes. And it's permanent. That art is a copulation. That's a child. So that's when they talk about marriage and male and female in the Bible. They're not talking about people. They're talking about your brain has a male and female. And when the male and female come together, they have a child. And that's an idea. Mm. You, like, you have to, it's a sexual act in our minds, but it's a similar act of joining the two brains. And then they have an idea, which can become a piece of art, this podcast, that painting, what you say out your mouth. That's from copulation. And, and that's why they say the wife's supposed to listen to the husband. It's here. It's not this. It's like the wife, female side, which is feeling and emotive. Right. To listen to the logical side, which is the male. That's what they describe that as. That's what it came with that. Because women understand more things when it comes to emotive and emotions than men do. 
we just turn that shit off. <laughs> What's the deal? Who we got to shoot? Right, no, don't right. Shoot. Who we got? Now, every now and then you find a woman that's like that, which is rare. Shit. Who we got to kill? If you didn't mess with our babies, that's rare. If you mess with our babies, that's coming out. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Quick. It's so funny to see that shit turn on, too. It's like, wait, 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 wait. So wait, 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 wait. Shout out to Jeff. Jeff is um in here as well. It yeah, is. <laughs> what up? Shout out to BTP Media, man. They be hooking the brother yeah, up. Off. For Rolling. sure. For <laughs> sure. We are a one hour and 30 minutes in, and this is wonderful. Did you know that? Did you know that? 30 minutes before. <laughs> And then I just see that hour. Yeah, we've been chilling. I guess it, I guess it's time. But I love it though. But we do have to come to a close. And I have a few more things. And um I have one final final, which is the 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 end all be all question. <laughs> so uh so, before we get to <laughs> you said what? I'ma just answer them. No stories. <laughs> okay. So first of all, let's get to what you're currently working on as a you are DJ. And uh, you have any music coming out? Anything that you can release right now? Um, outside of you said you have a, a film, kind of like kind of like a docu series, but but then of that yeah. nature. But yeah, you can go ahead and tell us that, and then we can move on to our top five. Okay, so I have a comic, Specter, New Enemy of State, which is about my life in the music business, and uh, I have a soundtrack that I'm releasing to that, and I just released the first single, Sigame, Follow Me on all platforms right now you can go check it out chris glove not chris Douglove, chris glove because that's what my dominican partners call me chris glove so <laughs> this is a dominican group i did this with. i'm i'm in uh, it's in english and spanish so Ooh. yeah sigame is the first single and it's about uh in the comic um ice t is the vice president and the vice president in this world is in charge of all the army navy everything he's the head of all the military so mm -hmm. ice t is like yo go find glove I need to talk and I go and run like you want to find me I'm on IG you can follow me you can like me that's it <laughs> I ain't coming to the White House fuck that <laughs> so that's the record yeah it's pretty funny but um yeah it's uh it's so me and Tony Hasboon Tony Hasboon is the company that's my we got a group so he's from a group called I can't say it all in it's like a long name but they just shortened it to look correct though but it's like the correct the business collective correctly done some kind of hell of a long name they're a legendary hip-hop group they're the first group like nwa from the dr what like, the I like it's like they're like nwa makes with wu-tang it's like Goose oh Ming. shit it's like 20 of them lo correcto and he was executive producer producer you know but he never rapped and uh he got these long ass four foot dreadlocks this motherfucker's rapping tony has boone is the company shout out to my dude that's my guy shout out to mr sweets my boy keith Bowles. we out here but um you can find me on instagram at chris glove remember sigame follow me there's an english language translation lyric video on my youtube dj chris the glove and is your is your Instagram C H I I mean C H R I S G L U V E underscore? Okay, Correct. gotcha. Yeah, I put it across the screen. Item that'll keep you from getting found. Especially <laughs> if, like I got one. My company's is at the front. I keep forgetting to tell people. <laughs> and you said you also have a cannabis. Um, yes. What is Absolutely. it called again? Sweets is that forward or backwards? Uh, that's so, forward. That's definite. That's the right way. Sweets, sweets is a tobacco-free blunt, pre-rolled, hand-rolled, glass tip with the diamond hue. Ooh, I bet that thing is tasty. Let me see if I can get that. <laughs> yep. So this is the Santorini Sunrise. This is uh, mango and uh, mango diamonds and uh, flavor. One of the nug flavors. I forgot which flavor. Mm. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Jeff once again. 
uh, for hooking this interview up. If you guys want to contact him, his information is on the screen. So we will move forward to the top five, which is five questions, five answers catered to you. And then after that, we have something called exclusive access so um if you have anything exclusive that you would like to tell our guests because after we do an interview together we're friends now that's what i always tell my <laughs> my guests <laughs> and, and, yes we're friends now and then we have a um final question of the day um and then we have a final final which i was just thinking about that because um who, who answered the question i think mix master ice he was up here uh, a couple of episodes ago and he answered it and it was so dope. So I figured I could just add it and see how you felt about it. So um, we're going to do the uh, what top five. So yes, top five, uh, top five songs you worked on, but we don't know. We didn't know that you were on. Oh, wow. Uh, the ones I keep yelling about. Um <laughs> The top number one song most people don't know that I worked on is Doggy Dog World by Snoop Dogg. I produced that with Dre, played all the instruments. Um, we did that in a song called Puffin' on Blunts and Drinking Tangeray like the same day. And a lot of people don't know I played the mini move bass on Dre Day, but uh, most people don't know I did produce Explosive completely. Without, I mean, you know, I didn't put the raps on there, but it was very few things. I didn't mix it, but I created it, the whole thing. It wasn't like I had a drum beat or a kick or a, a idea for a sample. I made the thing standing right there, just like with phone tap. And then Dre was like, dope, bro. Just some kind of way, you know. That's really a funny one to me, too. I still don't understand that because I was completely under contract. But I'm. it's, it's just, that's how it goes sometimes. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. That was three. Do you have two more, or it was just all the ones that you? Named? Oh, that was three. <laughs> oh, no, let me think. Uh, <laughs> most people don't know that I introduced. You said you introduced Exhibit and who? Doctor Dre. Oh. Yeah, uh, I produced Exhibit and brought him kind of in to the group. Introduced him you know, when uh, you know he had worked with some of the guys, but they couldn't really. He hadn't really connected in all the way with Dre, but him and his manager at the time, Swab, was a good friend of mine. So just linked up. And then after we did this album, now I didn't cultivate a relationship or nothing. I just was like, hey, it's like my boy Dave introduced me and Dre. He, you know what I mean? But uh, I, I did a song on him called Focus. I worked with George Michael. Most people don't know. I a song with George Michael. Production, additional production, remix on a song called Fast Love. Um, yep. Rest in peace, Mr. George Michael. Oh, uh, a lot of people, I don't think anybody knows that I was working with Ike Turner with my boy, uh, Renee. I never told anybody this, I don't think, but Ike Turner, right when he passed, right after he won his Grammy, that's when we were working with him. Ike Turner, he was a genius. Access. That was, that was my exclusive access right there. Oh, that yeah. Was, that's yeah, that was yeah, nobody knows that. Yeah, he was he was short. <laughs> that just blew my mind once again. Like this. Mike was like five one, like Prince. All them dudes, Mike Mike wasn't as tall as he looked. He looked like he was tall, but he wasn't that tall. If you ever see him and Prince standing together, they're not that far apart. All them Top dudes, man, they all little dudes. <laughs> Top five places you've DJ'd. Uh, so radio, the club that got me in the movies and into yeah. all the thing. Um, sports arena with Uncle Jam's Army. That was fun. Um, I did a show with my group, Paul Broke and Lonely. We went to, we did a tour in Europe and we went to Hamburg and they had this party train. The whole concert. They rode up on a train, so they all got there at the same time. Imagine the doors open and everybody walk in. That's how that shit was. It was no parking and people mulling around. The train, we was up in there, it was empty. That sucker opened up and bam, 10,000 people. We performed with Naughty by Nature, right? 
So that shit, setup was, I'm going to recreate the setup I have for my hip hop. I got an opera I'm writing uh, about breaking, but it's an opera with Cirque du Soleil and all kind of shit. Mm. So magic. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was dope. And then uh, I DJ, my top number one is when the 1984 Olympics came uh-huh. and Eric Jordan, that's where he got his name. Uh-huh. We DJ, I DJ with Ice T at the opening ceremonies party. So like, yeah, that was like the number one thing I ever. I know, really. Uh, <laughs> what? It did, of course. There are the clubs, Paradise, and the places all over the world with that. But those were it. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Top five <clears throat> software you recommend? Uh. So like I got a bunch of stuff, but I don't use every. I, okay, so I recommend whatever. So I don't make music like everybody else. Like I don't use a drum machine and all that anymore. Like I still use it, but I don't need the pads. I I have it on my laptop and I find my sounds, and then I place them. So like Fruity Loop ish, I guess. But I use Pro Tools. So when we started with Pro Tools, we had a tape deck and we would record the tape in the Pro Tools. So now I do it different, right? We do do that, but now because Pro Tools, we we were like alpha testers for uh, before the. Uh, it was a movie that they made this Pro Tools musical rig for called Space Jam. Pro Tools was actually made basically for Space Jam almost, or they implemented them together so they could do the audio and the visual and all that together in one source. What? So, sound tools before that. And then became Pro Tools for that move. So uh, the whole thing that is the Pro Tools is one. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm an SSL guy even at home, so anything SSL native, you get that if you can afford it. Work your way up. Like their little SSL two plus is only a couple hundred bucks, but I don't even use it. I use this. Uh, I have an analog audio interface that's amazing. Mm. But uh, I don't really use them. I mean, Adobe uh, Premiere Pro is the software I probably use the most. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Shit. <laughs> I got plug-in, and, uh, I got plugin Alliance. They got 8 million plugins. I don't use any one of them any more than the other. Mm. Bro- Pro Tools is the number one thing that you use. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so last one is top five moments in your career. I got another one I forgot. Oh, go ahead. Box, because I DJ. <laughs> so that's my other software, Record Box. Record Box, gotcha. So what was the question again? Top five moments in your career. Oh, wow. I love when people do. So, I'm gonna see if I can round them out to the top and last. But so, like, a lot of my moments involve cannabis. <laughs> so, like, I'm gonna tell you. So, I smoked the joint with Dr. Dre, Eddie Murphy, Chris Tucker, F. Gary Gray. Right, that was dope. So then. I was on stage at the House of Blues with my R&B band performing a command performance for Madonna to take us on tour. We blew it though, because my band partner decided to cuss out the sound man that day on stage, throw the mic at him. He thought he was a rapper. It was horrible. We even got a write up in the paper, God awful group, Poe Broken Lonely. It was terrible. So that's still my number four, that stage Actually, no. Remove that one. That's one okay. of the blue. There's a performance in that same time. Like the day before, mm-hmm. we did a command performance for all my friends at the Roxbury. And girl, it was like 200 people. And when we finished, everybody stood there. They they looked at us like, we don't know them. Then they started clapping. Like it was like a pause. It was so dope. So that's like, and then so... I was on tour. I was Dre's music 
director for the Chronic Tour, the first one. Right. So I used to like, we had a big ass 12 foot skeleton head smoking, all that. So I used to run run all the stage like the, the I'd make him talk when he did his part. I did right. work to open his eyes and lit the joint, all that. And that was like, I used to geek on that. Yeah. <laughs> That's like number three, being his music director on the Chronic Tour. Like when we was at the uh, Harmony, that, that was the place before the Mercedes Theater, uh -huh, the Mercedes, uh -huh. whatever it was, the Omni. I was in there just playing my 808 drum machine, just hitting the eight, I hit the bass, boom. The whole fucking stadium go crazy. I was back there like, nobody on the fucking, I'm just sound checking, right? But yeah, that tour, being a sound music director for Dre on the Chronic Tour was dope. And then, I got another dope uh, smoking ring. I smoked a joint with, I went to Jimmy Iovine's birthday party with Dr. Dre and I smoked, he was turned 50 and it was Bruce Springsteen, Stevie Nicks, Tom Petty, rest in peace, me and Dre. Yeah, smoking a joint in a circle. And the dude that was standing right outside the door of the party was on his property in a tent. He had a guy, a violinist, playing the Godfather theme. So we're smoking. It's going. A solo violin, girl. It's a movie scene. Oh, my God. I have to do So trip this. Um, from there, the top one is actually, I was with Dre and Jimmy Iovine, and he took us to meet Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails <gasps> at the house where the Manson murders happened. <laughs> oh. So if you ever heard of Charles Manson? Yes. He and Dre met Jimmy Iovine and Trent Reznor at the Manson murder house. I know everything Manson, right? So I'm in this house, right? I had seen the movie uh helter skelter numerous times growing up as a kid right? right so i'm in this house and i remember the helter skelter they did like reenactments and they had like actresses and you know it was like you couldn't tell if it was real or not right. and i remember they took the lady's blood off her stomach and painted pig on the door <laughs> so i was standing by the door by the kitchen right so they're talking music bullshit, blah 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 drinks and to do nothing with die nine inch nails and i said I know I just blurted it out. I was like, so is this the door that had blood painted pig on it? And he was like, dude, you know the house? <laughs> Everything he was doing, it took us on a murder tour. Showed us where all the bodies were, where they <sighs> them, took us to the front. They didn't tore the house down now, but I think that's gotta be my most wildest entertainment moment. I was with Dre and Trent Reznor and Jimmy Iovine at the Manson murder house, yeah. That was crazy. <laughs> oh my god! And you knew about that. You you were you. you I knew they kind of knew Manson. Blah blah blah. Yeah, he killed some people. Nah, right. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> he did more than kill some motherfuckers. He didn't <laughs> did this to this. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Every year they come up here with candles on Halloween <laughs> to the ten thousand people. That's why they tore it down. Because the people who lived up there on Cielo Drive, they would have a candlelit procession up on multiple nights. Like, and it was a lot of witchcraft ceremonies going on yeah. up there. So they oh. tore it down for the park. They ain't help. That's like a <laughs> monument. Yeah, like it's still gonna be somewhere like soil or, of something like that. Like, yeah. And wow. that's the truth because like bad things happen in certain places. Yeah. That's a weird shit. Like the places, you can feel it. When you get there, it's uneasy. I don't want to be around here. For sure. What happened? Oh, seven people got killed. I'm out. Mm -mm. Dude, it'll be like this. Hey, what happened here? Seven people got killed. You look over there. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga, go! <laughs> you know, you look back, poof. <laughs> it's gonna be cannabis smoke though. It, it, it ain't gonna be trickling, <laughs> right? I left a residue. I leave a residue. I leave an aroma mixed with 
a little oh. bit of MFK. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, you are so hilarious. I love your sense of humor and I love that you're down to earth. Um, <laughs> so with that being said, uh, you can go ahead and give your shout outs, your social media, any of your last words. And um, I'm going to do last but not least, which is question of the day. And then we're going to get up out of here. <laughs> All right, man. Take care of yourself, everybody out there. Don't think that it's ever over till it's over. And I'll tell you, you can find me on Chris Glove underscore on Instagram. Chris Doug Love, everywhere else, Facebook, whatever, all of them. I don't think any of them working today, but all of them. Mm -mm. We needed a break anyway. It's all good. <laughs> and I'm last, to... oh, go ahead, get your shout outs. Yeah. Woo. And then I got Tony Hasbu. My boys already shout out that, but we got my boy Big Crew. Get better, man. He just had a little medical issue mm. about lyricists and member of the group. And uh, Basico and shout out to Melly Mel. She's in town. We about to work on some stuff. So that's Ooh. it. I'm out. <laughs> and the question of the day is, what bothers you about the industry and what will be your solution to help fixing it? What bothers me about this industry is how they handle the old people who started it like there's a ton of people in this hip-hop business that's broke that if it weren't for them them niggas you wouldn't be able to go get a laptop with fruity loops on it they might have came up with the name fruity loops and a rap or it's like we don't take care of this thing is not like the nba like i'm a veteran i should have a pension i should be getting a million dollars a year just because of what i did from somewhere and so should Eric B and Rocky. All these dudes on tour because they got to get paid. They should just be doing shows for kings and, and special people because they're doing it because they got to get paid. You don't work when you don't have to. I mean, yeah, we love to, but I'd rather perform in my castle on a stage and invite people than have to go get on a plane, fly to Cuba. I mean, no, not Cuba. I love that place or any place like that. But fly to like, you know, Pittsburgh or someplace in America that's just a place, right. any place USA to perform to get a check. And then you give half of it is for the operating, like, ah. So I believe that they should be a better way of taking care of people in and mentally ill as well. Like because of people kill themselves, these guys, a lot of people are doing this drug thing it's mental illness too. It's not just the drug. It's maybe depression or something. Yeah. Who knows? But I think the industry, and it shouldn't be singled out as music because you've got music and everything. Anything entertainment should be taking care of these music guys. All of it. Sports, I hear music in there. Hey, games, I hear music. Everywhere I hear music, y'all should look out for music people, man. Nobody, everybody wants to not pay. Facebook don't want to put, they go not put music on their shit and turn on the radio in the car. Like they got music, they can't, they gotta turn off music to post. Like that's not even normal. That's not human. So take better care of the people who make the world better with music. That's what I think. Mm. <clears throat> Y'all heard it here from Chris, the glove Taylor. How you like my, my, um, my, <laughs> my announce, my announcer voice. <laughs> uh -huh. Girl, I'm busy. West West. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I appreciate you for coming through. I appreciate Jeff for uh, <laughs> bringing you through. I appreciate um, everybody that came through and rocked with us. So, Hollywood the podcast. Uh, hopefully, Instagram will come back up. Uh, if not, I don't know what I'm going to do. But if not, it is what it is. <laughs> Wow, I'm going to check. Oh, no, I can't check. I'm using this phone. It's all good. We about to get up out of here. <laughs> um, but follow me um, on Instagram, M-I-S-S Hollywood 313. Like, Don't share, subscribe this Hollywood. video. Yes, like, share, subscribe to this video. And last but not least, if it wasn't for the DJ, blank wouldn't exist.
You're not going to get me with that one. <laughs> when there's a party at a park with no music, they don't call that a party. They call that something else. Like if you got a group of people in a hall with no music, that's a lecture. If there's a guy up there with a microphone talking, that's a lecture. You got to have music to have a party. So it ain't no party without no DJ. And if it ain't ain't no hip hop, ain't no nothing without no DJ, you can't have hip hop without a DJ. You need a DJ to rap over something, first and foremost. That's why it's not called rap music, because DJs was mad. Like, what about us? It's hip hop. We agree with that. Mm. I just. Well, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to revisit this uh, interview because I'm pretty sure once you drop your um, everything that you're working on, I want to come back and talk to you more about it. Um, but until then, um, we're going to get up out of here. If you have anything else to say, you can leave them with some words. If not, we're going to get up out of this thing. Bye bye, y'all. Peace up, hey. A Town Down. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in to the last minute switch to YouTube, but I loved it. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be something amazing. I'm going to tell y'all who it is. Give me just a second. Because I got like, I'm booked. I'm booked and busy. You know what I mean? Hey, 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 hey. Ooh. Okay, tomorrow we have Sweet LD of Oak Town 357. You understand me? If you don't know who that is, make sure you guys do your research because I will also be doing my research. To be a guest on So Hollywood the Podcast, make sure you guys go to www dot all of hollywood dot biz in order to book an interview with your girl right here on youtube baby hey hey thank y'all for joining me peace up a town dizzy